Okay, so today's tutorial is a little bit different because I'm going to be using a different software and I'm going to be combining it with Rhino. So the software that I'll be using is called Blender. And what's really cool about this program is that it's 100% free. So you can go to their site and you can download it. And it has some really cool modeling features that are a little bit harder to achieve in Rhino. So I'll just go here and kind of have a new interface and you can middle click to kind of rotate around. Now you're going to have a default cube here um, initially. And so you can use this one, but I tend to delete it first and then you could add a new object. Now the object that I want to add is going to be, I kind of like geodesic domes and this already has a default object. So if you go to add or you can go to, and when you hover above, it also gives you the shortcut. So shift a, and then we'll go to mesh icosphere. So we just literally brought in an icosphere that, you know, we went here to add and we're in the layout um, section of Blender. Now, I'm actually not that good with Blender, but I knew I know just some simple tricks that allow me to get a nice uh, form. So what I'll do is I want to make a copy of this so I can basically edit the copy, not the original. So we have here on the top, right? We have Icosphere. That's fine. That's going to, that's the object that we have right now. And if we hit shift D and then hit enter, it basically makes a copy and right on top. So we can take that original one, hide it, and then have this one to work on. Uh, we can automatically actually just go here to the modifier. So this little wrench, that's going to be the modifier. And this is what's going to allow you to alter your geometry. So we go to add modifier and I'm just going to go straight to, well, there's other things we could do, but I'm going to go straight to the one that I like, which is wireframe. Wireframe just allows you to create a really nice wireframe. That's super, super simple. And it's to the point that's kind of what we like. And there's other features like relative thickness that allows for varying thickness, uh, depending on, you know, uh, the geometry. So there's a lot of features and things here that are really neat. And so for now, I just wanted to show that one. And what I'm going to do is just, I'm basically done with that. What you do is you hit apply. And now we have basically that, which is the wireframe and we can bring back the icosphere. Now what's cool about this is that we can take this information and I'm just going to export it into Rhino where I can do the rest of the things that I know how to do. Um, of course you can learn how to do those here, but I'm more used to, um, Rhino and I have V-Ray in my Rhino. So that's how I'm going to be uh, rendering it for, uh, showing the final results. So hopefully you got, uh, how that works. It's super straightforward, super simple. And there's even more things we can do. Like if you were to select that outer frame, we can go to add modifier and you can go to bevel and just further kind of adjust the smoothness of it. So you can make this really smooth or you could just say, no, I just want it to be not that smooth and kind of create these other type of geometries. And it was, it's fairly quickly. So um, let's see, I'll just go to one here and I'll actually be exporting this one. I think this looks nice. So I'll go apply and now we have this and I'll select it and go to file export. Um, and there's all these different options for me. What works is STL, um, because I'm able to open it in Rhino. I'm sure there's other one of these that will probably work. Uh, but STL is the one that works for me. And I'm just going to try to put it in my desktop for now and call this Ico dome zero one and then export. And now we basically have that file. Let's see where it we have that file here. And what we're going to do is now bring this into Rhino and let's, um, let's take a look at what it would look like. So take this, let's bring that right into Rhino, go to insert. And it's actually pretty small. So we'll go here to shaded view. And now we have basically this, um, 
I think this is a grouped object. So if I ungroup and explode block, we have the inner portion, which is great because now we can apply a material to that. And we have the outer one. And if I'm not mistaken, let's see if we have them in different layers now. So let's actually go ahead and do that. We'll change object layer on that one and then change object layer on this one. And now that we have those two materials, then we'll type in purge, enter, enter. And now basically we have the structure and here we have the glass. And all we have to do now is kind of split this mesh and uh, do a quick render just to see what it looks like. And now we have the ability to use more than one program to kind of model and then bring here into Rhino and we can finalize and do uh, final details here because it's a lot easier to uh, do some more modeling here. So uh, hopefully that made sense and I'll show you what this will look like uh, by going on time lapse and adding some materials.
Okay, so this is what it looked like, looks like in the end. It looks pretty good. Um, and I'll tell you what I did. So I'll move this to the side. And what I've done basically was I took that mesh and I created a bottom plane. So that was a ground plane here. And so um, I also added a person, which I typically do just to show some scale. And then this, I gave it a little bit of a thickness. What I did is I turned it from a mesh and I went mesh to NURB and then I turned it into a NURB surface. Then I offset surface to give it a little bit of thickness. That way the material glass works a little bit better. And what I did is I took a mesh. So I went mesh box and I created a box and then I subtracted the bottom portion from this box. Of, um, so I did that with this form and I also did that with this one. And then I was able to basically have um, the dome sitting like that. And then I just did a quick render and I added a spotlight here. Um, so that's what it looks like. Uh, if you have any issues or any questions, let me know. And if you like this type of content where I kind of go into other programs and use them simultaneously with Rhino, let me know what you think. And um, yeah, I hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching.